because uh, my viewers haven't seen me being interviewed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my first interview, so exciting. <laughs> I had to get kicked out and get my life burned to the ground before I decided, you know what, maybe I'm in a cult. Everything just kind of like, like blew up mm -hmm. in my brain and in my life. Let's um, go to the dark side. <laughs> Let's dim the lights this channel's here. all about. <laughs> Light some candles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, get your Ouija board out. Um, I had, I've had marriage proposals, even though I don't think they're totally serious. Thank goodness. Uh, Things that nobody deals with and it messes you up. Yeah. Everybody, welcome to XJW Live, episode seven. Nap, are we, episode seven, Nash. Yeah, I can count that high. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder how high we're gonna get. I don't know, grade seven math high. doesn't go far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are super excited here today. Um, we have Tammy visiting us on the channel. Um, she has her own YouTube channel, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be aware of that. Um, the channel's Living Truth. And, um, I, you know, I actually stumbled uh, across Tammy's uh, channel maybe, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. And I looked and I said, I know that person. And it's, it's Tammy. I, I grew up with Tammy. And here she has this... You know, this super um, popular channel, I was just blown away. So I reached out to Tammy and um, we talked a little bit um, through uh, email. And then we started the channel and Tammy reached out to us actually to come on to the channel. So we are just super thrilled to have you here, Tammy. Thank you for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, actually, when you reached out to me back then, because uh, it's always kind of strange when, you know, someone from your past, like, emails yeah. you out of the blue and, and has is watching, you know, your channel. And mm -hmm. no, I'm not, I don't think I'm that popular. And I'm, <laughs> I don't, it's, it's more well, of your views topic. would say otherwise. <laughs> okay, well, you know, <laughs> I can't help that. <laughs> you you but, got something people, people like to see what you have to say. <laughs> well, you know, as long as it's a good message, that's all I can hope for. <laughs> it is. Well, I love your, I love your videos. Uh, they're, uh, they're awesome. Thank, well, I'm really glad you guys started your format. Um, I think there was a gap <laughs> more recently <laughs> as to like having, you know, this type of content. Um, but you guys are like really um, fun and upbeat and, and um, it's kind of fun to watch. So yeah, thanks for starting it up. Hey, that's that that's great. You know, and you know, uh, you had mentioned something prior to us uh, recording here that, you know, and the, the the whole basis of this channel is actually not just for Nash and I to to run the show. Um, you know, other people can come on too and be uh, be a guest or host and host a, host an episode and interview other people. Yeah. We've actually uh, Jason Wynn has has talked about maybe having the all the members of Ixa. Uh, having them on and we hope man we really hope that that happens one day except where... for one except for one oh yeah <laughs> i don't what? yeah i don't think lloyd will be on that one. <laughs> oh, what's ixa i don't really like, Ix that's how out of things i am sometimes <laughs> yeah I ixa is the um so the australian royal commission was the oh, australians yeah. investigation into child sexual abuse right I'm well the U yeah the uk did one as well England and, and Wales, okay. actually. I did see that. I just yeah. acronyms sometimes they just get lost, really. Hey, right. I'm with you. I am totally with you. <laughs> well, and there's that. two there's two ICSA acronyms, right? There's the oh cultic God, studies really? one, which is just ICSA. And then oh, there's really? the IICSA, which is the International Inquiry into Child Sex Abuse, which is the ICSA oh, Jason's okay. talking about. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just so to, just to confuse it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, the point is, yeah, that's what this, uh, you know, this uh, channel's for. And, you know, I hope that, you know, that that invitation is for sure open to you, Tammy. And actually, uh, I think you had mentioned that you might mirror this episode on your channel, too. Hey, that that might happen. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. love to put it on my channel. And because uh, my viewers haven't seen me being interviewed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my first interview. So exciting. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of you being interviewed, um, a lot of people know you more than they know Nash and I, but still, 
why don't you kind of give us an introduction to yourself and your life in the the Jehovah's Witness organization? Uh, get as detailed as you want, and yeah, this t- tell us who tell us all about you. Oh, exciting! Um, not so exciting, probably. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I was born in, so I was born into the uh, third generation. So I've you know third generation XJW. It's kind of funny when you do bios like this, right? Um, third generation XJW. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so my, my grandparents, I think you knew my grandparents, Greg. Um, yeah. But they were like a special, sometimes I forget even the verbiage of it all, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But they're like special, regular, super duper pioneers. Um, but yeah, my whole life, they went to serve where the need was greater, that sort of thing. My parents also, um, they've done, you know, serving where the need was greater. They also regular and special pioneers. I think the last time I, I met your parents, they were pioneering. I think so. Yeah, I, I can't remember when they haven't been pioneering, actually. But yeah, so very devout um family that I came from. And then a lot of family that I just never grew up with at all because they weren't Jehovah's Witnesses. So, you know, I've, I've gotten to learn or get to know some of my other side of the family that were never really allowed to be around us, I guess. So, but yeah, that's kind of my rundown. I did do pioneering. I was a, I was a pioneer, but just one of those um, auxiliary pioneers. Yeah. So every, actually around this time of year, when they put out the call for pioneers in the yeah. congregation and then you're guilted into signing up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually it was, I think it was your brother. Yeah. He, yeah. He guilted, I uh, guilted him right back and he had to sign up one year. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. my, well, just see my family's third generation too, maybe fourth. Well, no third gen. I think it's third generation actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know a lot of your family. Um, yeah. You and I go quite a ways back, but it's kind of interesting when we think about, you know, our families and what got us in in the first place. And Yep. Yeah, but um, yeah. You, it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> you know, I, I remember one of my family members saying to me once, um, this is my brother, actually said, you know what? It is possible to be born into the true religion, Greg. It is possible. Apparently. Which yeah. one would that be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's why I I named my channel Living Truth because you know taking a, a pun stab at the truth part, you know, mm-hmm. from what we grew up with, but then living your real truth is you know your being, your actual being. So, and unfortunately, uh, <laughs> there's other channels out there that are like uh, uber Christian, and but anyways, I'm on the other side of it. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. not don't worry we're not uber christian here <laughs> nash is though nash is. yeah extremely <laughs> so, <laughs> i love jesus oh, wow. that's why i wear this <laughs> i can't actually see it in my camera but <laughs> i i just wear a cross because i'm very blasphemous yeah and it's I, burning named, uh, it's burning on his chest right I, now. and i named my cat jehovah <laughs> oh wow nice, yeah. nice. <laughs> a lot Whatever. of angry people you know. <laughs> Jehovah the cat what tell us about tell us about Jehovah the cat Dave. what is it it's your Instagram account right <laughs> it is an Instagram account for the cat yeah but I don't do much with it anymore but I used to post little parody stuff about the day's text and I love that whatever stuff about it but yeah it's it's a funny thing because my daughters they refuse to call him Jehovah because <laughs> their mom is a witness <laughs> but my stepsons they call him Jehovah like whatever and so it's funny when other people will ask, like, oh, we just want a nice cat. What's his name? And then you're like, Jehovah. They're like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I know lots of dogs named Zeus and Buddha. And I, he's just That's another God it. name to me. So I thought it'd be funny to do it. And uh, uh, yeah. That's I mean, blasphemous. It's, it's great. It's yeah, that's the most blasphemous thing I've ever heard. My ex wife brought it up in, in our divorce proceedings at court. The judge oh. read it out that he named oh. his cat Jehovah. So that's it's, he's that's different. It's very controversial. Listen, there there is other YouTubers out there that have cats on their channel. We know who you're talking. We're talking about here. Yeah, yeah JW sure. Thoughts, great channel. You guys should check it out. Um, yeah, so we should we should have Jehovah the Cat on one day. Yeah, I, I'd like to see Jehovah. He's very overweight. I, I didn't yes. even know he existed. 
actually. Yeah, I, he does. <laughs> he lives in my house. <laughs> my mom's wondered where he was. Exactly. <laughs> where are you? Do you pray to him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent we all spent a lot of time in our life talking to Jehovah. I he never it. talked sure. back. Little right. did we know he didn't talk back because he's a cat. Because he's a cat. Sometimes I heard meowing, but I didn't yeah. realize why. Now you know. <laughs> now now we all know. <laughs> now we know. Oh. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you guys are bad. Yep. You, know, yeah. you guys are gonna get taken in the back. You know, elders meeting. For both yeah. of you. Oh, yeah. well, you know, it is it is a scary thing when you first leave and, and when you start having different type of thoughts like that. Um, like I truly, I don't know if we can talk about this right now, but I was, sure. it was sure. made me think of, okay, <clears throat> made me think of when I left and I'd never lived on my own. You know, I just was separating from my husband and uh, got this basement suite and I'm like, you know, it was super scary. I was in my like 35 when I moved out on my very own. Um, anyways, it was very scary. But the thing about that was super scary about it was that I, because I wasn't going to meetings, I really thought that the demons and Satan were going to attack me. Like this was a real, real mm -hmm. thing that I, that I thought was going to happen to me. So I wasn't like, I wasn't actually planning to leave the religion. <laughs> that was not my thought. Um, yeah. But yeah, isn't that just crazy? Like, the some of these things like the the um satan and the demons and like that fear process like i thought of that the other day um just the 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 idea of like how did i ever think that you know like to have such a fear like i was cr i was crying praying to jehovah not cat um back <laughs> yeah, when i was in, sure. i was in my basement suite and i'm just like please don't let satan and the demons attack me like isn't that just crazy the things it's you funny have. yeah it's funny you bring that up because this morning we had lisa and i my wife had a conversation about this exact thing because she's never been a witness right has no no background in that and not even really religion yeah. in general and uh um i went to bed and my daughter went to bed at like whatever 10 or 10 30 and the boys her boys wanted to stay up because we were watching that uh like deaths on the nile or something it's a disney movie and uh they really wanted to finish it they wanted to finish this movie they refused to go to bed so, but they didn't want her to go to bed because in case they got scared that, you know, the movie, she had to be with them. So she had to stay up with them. And uh, so we were talking this morning a little bit and she said, like, it's so weird how her kids are just, you know, they have nightmares and they're scared from like little scary movies or not even scary, but like an action movie or something. Yeah. She said that anxiety, like she can see it in my, like in my youngest daughter. Um, she's like a very anxious kid. And I know looking back how much anxiety I had my whole life, really. Until I got out of this, uh, yep. this religion, I was a super anxious person. I had a massive fear of the water, fear of heights. Um, like I work in construction and I could barely work on roofs and scaffold. Whereas now I do mm -hmm. roofs a lot and I always worked on scaffold and I don't have the same like paralyzing fear that I did. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know how you explain that, but the, I think the reality is we have so much anxiety built into us as little kids because we don't only think that there's something under the bed, but our parents okay. think there might be something under the bed. Our parents like, are it, telling us there yeah, is something. Like I can tell my kids know, now that in, in this, effect. yeah, this isn't real. Like guys, this isn't yeah. real. Like ghosts aren't real. None of this stuff is real. It's just a story. It's just a made up story because it's entertaining. But when we were kids, it was like, oh man, what? You had a bad dream? Well, what did yeah. you do at school? I remember my brother played with a Ouija board. And all of a sudden, oh my, my other God. brother saw a ghost and a witch coming across the room. And it's like, this is all in your head because you've been told this is what's going to happen. So now you think it's happening. You have bad dreams about it. And everybody just yeah. it keeps just pumping the narrative up that, yeah, there's demons and ghosts. And this is why you got to listen to Jehovah. And he's the only one that can protect you. And you get these uh -huh. kids that are just like stress cases. And, well, uh, and it problem. translates into adult life. Yeah, I totally agree. Like it's a control factor. And that's, I mean, most religions were put into place to control the public. And that was before governments were, were created. Um, and so that is one of the main reasons that religions are so controlling. And, and that fear factor is the biggest part of it. You're yep. going to die. You're not going to go to heaven. There's hell, you know, whatever religion you believe in. There's a control factor there. And it's usually based on fear, if not always based on fear. 
Um, and so as a you know Jehovah's Witness growing up in that, yeah, we are constantly being bombarded with, you know, Armageddon is coming tomorrow. You better be ready for it. You know, and that's why I got baptized in the first place at the age of 13, because my my dad said, you know what, if Armageddon comes tomorrow, you probably won't get through because um, you're old enough to make this decision on your own. And Jehovah will look at that. And, and uh, you know, that was the narrative. And How so I was so scared. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, but that's my dad also believing that from an yeah. organization that fuels, you know, that. Yep. that and uh, we all believe too. Like, I'm not looking <laughs> down on your dad at all. We all believed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I yeah. maybe even talk, told my kids the same thing. I don't remember, but it's possible when I was totally. in, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, even just crying over people that were disfellowshipped. Like, I'm so sad they're going to die. They're dying. They're basically dead. You know, <laughs> like they, they yeah. don't have a chance because they, you know, if they're not coming back, you know, yada, yada. And so I still have family that still cry over me um, being, you know, when I see them, they just get all teared up and sad. You know, we wish you could come back because I'm dead. I'm basically dead woman walking, <laughs> which is like yeah. a sad to live your life, you know. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, and and back to this, it is, I, 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 I totally resonate what you said about us believing in Satan and the demons. Um, I, I, and it's funny, I was just thinking about this the other day, I think I was getting into the shower or something, and I realized, you know what, I used to think like the devil and the demons were real. You know what I mean? I used to, you know, you know, and I used to live my life back, and it seems so odd to me now that that I believe that you know yeah. and that my family still you know to 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 say something about my my there's actually members of my family that think that honestly think that there is specific demons that are after our family oh yeah yeah and uh, and, and and there is family members now that think that I'm possessed I'm possessed by demons. I, well, that's the only, you know what I mean? I mean no other explanation. I think you, you're people probably... say you are, you must be possessed. Yeah, you're, for sure. You know, for sure. Satan has got control of your mind. We'll have Callan, we'll have Callan back on the show again someday. But anyway, we interviewed him. He's a good friend of mine and he has a, a lot of crazy stories, but the one story, um, anyway, some stuff happened, some like bad stuff that everybody got to get dealt with judicially and everything else. And, uh, his brother, his brother, who's an elder and super JW and also a giant asshole, um, he came in to, you know, explain what had happened. And he said, you know, you guys were watching a lot of like R-rated movies mm -hmm. around that time. That's and so obviously, it. obviously the demons got to you. It's like, nope, that's not, that's not at <laughs> no, all. There's what legitimate it is. questions. There's legitimate problems. <laughs> it's like, see, <laughs> you don't even have to take responsibility yeah. because the demons yeah. are really at fault. Well, well, yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw, what's that, Tammy? Oh, sorry. It was, it's just such an, a simple answer to give people. Yeah. Right? yeah, it is totally, you know, and somebody, I saw a post uh, just yesterday about gaslighting, you know, somebody's trying to figure out what real, what gaslighting is. And, you know, there's a couple different definitions and I kind of use the liberal definition of it, but it's really when, when anybody can deflect a question or, a, or an argument you have by just saying you're crazy. You know, I don't need to answer your question. I don't need to w deal with the problems with witnesses that you're bringing up with child sexual abuse or issues, you know, uh, other issues. Um, I can just say that you're possessed by demons and then I don't have to worry about what you have to say. <laughs> it's yeah. such simple ways to answer anything, really. Like either yeah. God's going to God, God will tell us in his own time, you know, will either have shed, we'll yeah. have light shed on this issue or Satan's attacking us. Like these are such mm -hmm. simple, simplified things when there's there's so much more complexities that are actually happening in the world, you know, yeah. and the worldly people. When did you guys start trusting worldly people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, it happened to me. Uh, I'll answer the Nash. I want to hear what you say, too. Um, uh, I that happened to me quite. It was a real revelation to me, maybe a year and I actually started to talk to worldly people. And I'm like kind of an open book. I talk too much. My now wife says I talk too much. Everybody knows I talk too much. <laughs> but I was actually telling worldly people that it's so weird now to not look at you like you're evil. 
it's so, you know what I mean? Now I just look at you like a normal person, you know? Um, <laughs> I, I still have problems with like having good friends that are, that are like, I don't think you have that problem, Tammy, making really good friends outside, you know, like I, I still kind of think of myself as a little different than people. And I kind of have a hard time relating to people sometimes. And mm -hmm. that's a, that's a real lingering problem that has, you know, because of being raised in that organization, I just kind of feel different than everybody. But yeah, it didn't take me too long to, to, to not think that, that, uh, that witnesses were evil. I mean, sorry, uh, worldly people were evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whoops. Whoops a daisies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops. How do you really feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't really, uh, I don't know when I, when I got out, a lot of stuff had happened like uh, around my life in general. So it wasn't like I just got to leave because I didn't believe anymore. Like, <clears throat> you know, I'm a little envious of these people that got to leave for conscientious reasons. I, I had to get kicked out and get my life burned to the ground before I decided, you know what, maybe I'm in a cult. <laughs> so, my life burned to the ground too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. <laughs> so, so that was tough. But the reality is like, once I got into a better place, once I dealt with everything and it was over, and, uh, and I could see things clearly for the first time, really, after years of this. Mm -hmm. um, then I started to notice worldly people uh, that had known me my whole life, because I'm still in the same town that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they started to kind of come out of the woodwork and show support and, and friendship. And, uh, and, and, and it was really nice to see. You know, it, it made me realize that these people, um, they really care because they've got no skin in the game. They don't owe me anything. Um, yep. and they get nothing out of being nice to me. Like there's no payoff for them. Uh, mm -hmm. so they just do it out of the goodness of their heart because they're just good people that care and they, they don't want to see somebody's life go to hell. Right. They just want you to do well and they're happy to see you do better. And so that mm -hmm. was really great to see. Like, I, I mean, I think for the first time I saw real kind of that, um, I guess it's love, right? Like we never had real love because, uh, our love was gone with an announcement that we had from our families. And so, so that was interesting, but I guess like, like Greg said, I still have a hard time making, I have some good friends, um, that I consider good friends, but I still kind of have a hard time making friends. I, uh, like I don't have like the buddies I had that I grew up with. And maybe that's just because you don't have those years of experience or, mm -hmm. you know, common experience mm -hmm. together. Uh, so I have a little bit of a difficult time and I find I'm a little bit sensitive when, uh, you know, I think you're a little more on guard after this because oh, yeah. people turned on you so much um and you know there's always things that happen like i talked to greg about this but a little while ago some some person who was upset with me for something foolish decided to spread rumors that i was uh, abusing my wife that i was beating my wife and there was abuse in our household and this was just a person just an asshole that was just trying to you know they were mad about something and wanted us to, to smear my name and this got back to me and um like it wasn't like I just brushed it off. Like it really bothered me. Like it, yeah. it really bothered me for, for weeks on end. Okay. And, uh, and it made me, and it made me more on guard, right? It makes, for some reason yeah. I have this knee jerk reaction now to pull back and, uh, and just go and just want to be alone. Um, yeah. Cause, I, cause I think, I think when yeah. you're burned that hard, you, you don't trust anything anymore. hundred percent. I mean, I, I totally resonate with what you guys are saying. Like, um, like, like worldly people, uh, like, well, when I was leaving, for instance, um, and like I said, I wasn't planning to leave the truth. I was well, actually, yeah. Can you talk about that? You're like waking up process. Can you build that into what you're saying? What you, what you're talking about here? I'm curious about that. Yeah. I mean, so the waking up process, let's see here, probably separation and divorce. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So when that was all coming down, like my, my husband cheated on me for multiple years. And, you know, when that was unveiled, you know, you go through a whole like, holy cow, my life is just spinning out of control. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, it's embarrassing. I didn't want to tell anybody about what was happening. I didn't want I was protecting the people that were involved. I didn't want them to get disfellowshipped. I didn't you know, I didn't want to have repercussions on something that happened in the past, but you know, it's very much right in the front of my face at the moment. <clears throat> so I did, I said, you know what, we don't need to do this. We don't need to go to the elders and all this and, and basically spread out our whole life on somebody else's desk. And so they can kind of pick through it 
and uh, do that. Yep. So I said, you know what? No, let, let's not do this. And so, but I am leaving you anyway. Um, I just couldn't, I couldn't stay with somebody who's, who's, you know, cheated on me to that extent. So anyway, so I, I left, like I said, I got my first basement suite, all this kind of stuff. Um, and at the same time, I, I mean, it was extremely confusing as anyone would know going through any kind of like shake up in your life as to what to do. I stopped going to meetings just because I was so stressed. I didn't want people to asking me about, you know, why aren't you guys sitting together and, you know, having these kind of things. Cause when I was going to the meetings after I left him, it was so weird. You know, he's mm -hmm. on one side of the hall, I'm on another. And then sometimes we, we sat together and then people are all, you can just hear it. This little, oh, like, and the witnesses with the rumor mill, that oh would have God. been like the talk of there's, the town. Oh, there's <laughs> right? brutal. Like, small town, right? So small yeah. town, everyone knows your dirt. Um, yeah. And I was trying to avoid that. Like, I was like, nobody needs to know that they're not involved mm -hmm. on the day to day of my relationship, 17 years. Why would they be there at the end of it? Like, I'm, and I'm not one to throw someone out in the garbage anyways. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I value people, most people. Um, <laughs> it's just like that value you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but, um, so yeah, so then I stopped going to meetings. I'm just like, it's so anxiety ridden and I was so stressed about it. Plus I was really busy at work at the time too. And then just moving and just all this stuff, right. It was havoc. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to like take some time away from the meetings. Cause it's just too much right now. That was your first mistake. <laughs> it's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. That's no, the, the waking up stuff. When you stop going to meetings. No, uh, it's just a lack of Holy spirit. Come on. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's when you really start to wake up. <laughs> Satan's got his claws in me. He's trying totally. hard. Um, but yeah, so then I just stopped going to meetings. And then um, the, what actually woke me up was, um, well, because my ex was still going to meetings. And then he would tell me, because we were still talking and everything. And he's like, he goes, um, what is it? Oh, yeah. So some people would give him like casseroles or some food thing, like, poor him like, oh yeah poor, you. like poor as if guy. i did something wrong right and i'm yeah. like well that's bullshit <laughs> like i didn't do anything but well you're so, stopped going to meetings and he's going to meetings yeah. so obviously you're the one that's the bad one I'm the right? bad one yeah, yeah so i'm the bad one so i'm like well that's shit like that's just wrong <laughs> that i'm being yeah. judged like this and they have no clue so you know what what where's the love you know because yeah. i started thinking like where's the love like here I am in, I'm on my island now because nobody's around me. No one's calling me. How are you? Nothing. And uh, um, except for my ex. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, Funny uh, how that works. Yeah. He's weird. <laughs> he wants me back. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of that. But, yeah. anyway. um, but then the other thing was like, I only had like one friend. My my best friend who you, you know Greg. <laughs> yeah, I know who you're talking about. You know very like, very well. <laughs> very well. Um, anyways, uh, she was like, "You need to start coming back to meetings and all this," which was basically, I think she was telling me, like, "You need to get back there to you know people show you some love." Uh, mm. But I was like, I just don't feel it, and then I just started feeling more and more like people were um, judging me because <laughs> they were. But I was like, why wouldn't you know like other people from the congregation who I was really close with. And I'm like, where are they? Like I'd call them up, nothing. They wouldn't call me back. And then they lied about calling me back to my, my one best friend. And uh, I'm like, they're lying, you know, like, cause I would see it on my cell phone. There's technology that actually shows when someone calls yeah, you. Like, exactly. Yeah. You don't call what? me. <laughs> I haven't changed my number. So yeah. anyways, I, I started just feeling like this whole, like, okay, Tammy's on her own island now and being judged pretty harshly for something that nobody even knows why they're doing that. So, yeah, so that that was kind of where I started, like, where's the love? Conditional versus unconditional and really looking at that. Um, but, yeah, that was my wake up <laughs> process. It had nothing to do with doctrine or anything. I've had questions around that my whole life, but that wasn't what, what, it, what it was. Yeah. It was uh, my own personal Life. It's interesting all the different things that have that that end up uh, uh, getting people to to wake up. You know, like it. Mm -hmm. There's a real wide spectrum of things. Like for me, it was, uh, you know, the the thing that started it was actually a friend of mine uh, started complaining about 
uh, how the Watchtower doesn't allow us to get educated. And and um, it, it, it's such a small thing, but it, yeah. it was the first time where it I allowed myself to be critical of the organization. That was the it's first normal. time. And then once you allow yourself to do that once, well, then <laughs> the cards start to fall. And then you start, okay, you ask that little question, and then you start asking bigger questions, you know, and, and yeah. then I'm, I met with the elders like multiple times. What about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? And, you know, it's just, oh, yeah. it, all, it all fell apart. Oh, think- well, no, cause uh, well, so then what really was the clincher for me for never going back was uh, so my ex, he's like, he goes, how you're being treated is not fair. Like, it's so unfair to you. Like he's being like coddled, poor him, poor him. And uh, you know, here I'm out on my own Island. So, He's like, it's, I have to tell the elders. And I'm like, don't do it. Like, whatever, I can deal yeah. with this. And he goes, no, this isn't fair to you. So, you know, that was nice for him, I guess, for yeah. actually care to a certain extent. Um, so he did. He went and t- talked to the elders. So the next day I get a phone call from, you know, people, you know, Greg. <laughs> yeah, Relatives, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so then one of the um, elders started just, basically hounding me um really? at work yeah. and just all these kind of things right like oh and i'm like what are you gonna what do you think you're gonna actually tell me that i don't know about being in a, a marriage for 17 years like do you really think i don't know how to like be a wife or you know as god wants me to be this kind of thing that we were taught anyway so once he, my ex um uh, confessed, I guess he ended up getting reproved, but, uh, then everybody he didn't get this fellowship. Uh, hey? No, it was, hmm. I guess, I don't know why, honestly, like it was hmm. too many years past. I really don't know what, yeah. what the whole reasoning is that, and really, I think it all depends on what the, uh, who's in your committee, <laughs> yep. you know, what kind of relationship how, you already have and how big them. a deal it is in the hall. Right. How many, people yeah. know about how many people know, right. It's fairly quiet. It's, Oh, yeah, just, yeah just it's ridiculous. It. But so, yeah, they reproved him, publicly reproved, um, take away all of his mic handling abilities. <laughs> this is a whole... <laughs> yeah. We're privileged oh, no. I can't, yeah. can't handle no the mic now. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So, yeah, it was crazy. But so then I got this, this elders meeting. So we want to meet with you. And so I'm like, fine. They wanted to come to my home, which I'm like, nobody was allowed to come to my new home because I needed my own oasis kind of thing. So yeah. I didn't even let my parents, I didn't let anyone know where I was living because I didn't want a hundred Joho's witnesses knocking on my door every Saturday, which I knew would happen. And uh, anyway, so I didn't. Let's go see Tammy. So I said, <laughs> I Let's count time it. and go see Tammy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, she needs some uh, encouragement. Um, so yeah, I said, let's meet in a restaurant because that way I knew I could just leave, right. If something went down and I wouldn't be trying to get them out of my home, Yeah, <laughs> so Good thing just, to- tip, just a tip for anybody out there who's like, you know, yeah. thinking of leaving and wanting to meet with the elders and they say, come to your home. Don't do it. Go somewhere uh, where you can leave. It's really important. That's a great anyway. tip. Actually. We're going to release that yeah. as a separate video. Otherwise you're going to be making <laughs> cookies and getting yeah. them coffee. Oh, right. I know. No, you remember that leave. video about the, that, that elders training video where they talked to the grieving widow? Have you seen that one? It's mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah. It is awful. It is awful. Yeah, She's I'm, crying I'm and they're just like, it. and in the, and then she gets up to make them coffee and, and uh, get them cookies. And, and the elder yeah. like looks up and he's like, thank you, Jehovah. It's like, what, what does this even mean? Like you, this is insane. It was insane. And this is how they're training the people that are supposed to be helping these grieving widows and people with yeah. serious oh, problems. So if you haven't oh, seen it, you got to see it. Maybe we should. Yeah, that's well, I try not to watch too many videos on JW org because they make me throw up. So yeah. it's, uh, there's just too much, like, it's so cringy, right? It's so yeah. cringy. Yes. Um, and it's, it's shocking that that's where, they've led the organization now to be all video oriented yeah. and mm-hmm. even the children's videos, the cartoons, you guys have seen those, right? Like, oh, they're oh, gross. Yeah. unfortunately, those ones make me the angriest of all. Right. 
Like, how can you get deep programming? Some of those songs, I guys still had the tunes in my head after. I'm like, this is like so culty. It's just, yeah. sick. it's so it's bad. It's straight out of 1984. Yeah, you know? it is. Yeah it's, yeah, it's so bad. But yeah, oh. so anyway, after that happened, um, where I met with these elders and I'm like, oh, so, and I was so pissed off. I was so mad um, that now after three months of, you know, everyone kind of vacating, you know, my island, um, now I get these, this elder shepherding call, right? And so we're in the restaurant and I go, well, and they're both on one side and I'm on the other side, like it was not yeah. comfortable. And uh, I said, I'm just going to have tea kind of thing. Like I, do, I didn't want to sit for a whole meal because, you know, that's yeah. also commitment to the meal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's You're wrap trying to up. figure out any way to keep this meeting as short as possible. <laughs> I know because I was so mad. I was just so upset. Yeah. And uh, that they. But you I don't want to say anything to get friends. yourself be up. <laughs> oh, sorry. What was and that? You don't want to say too much to get yourself like accidentally disfellowshipped or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. It wasn't even on my mind, honestly. Um, yeah. Cause I'm like, how would they, why would they? Exactly, but I was yeah. so pissed off that they took this length of time, especially the shepherding overseer or whatever he's called this. Is that what it is? Congregation overseer who I thought was, yeah, nice. it's a Kobe now, overseer. but it was the presiding overseer used to be. Yeah. 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 And so I was like, why did it take you guys so long? You know, like you thought here, you thought I was the bitch that left my husband and you're all like putting so much emphasis on poor him and nobody, like everyone just like, judged me so bad. So I had my full out spiel on them, how I felt. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, how, how could you call yourself like um, shepherds? When here I am, like I'm hurting and I'm just like, and here now, three months later now, because he confessed to you last night, this is where you are in front of me trying to save my life because, you know, I wasn't worth saving three months ago. You know, you're just letting me go. So I was so pissed off and I'm like, and he goes, don't use, you don't have to use that language. Cause I said, bitch. And I was like, I'll use I want. you know, I was just so mad. I was like, red flag. No the worrying about the wrong thing here here there's a person right? hurting who's yeah. who's upset about something and they're worried about the words you're using just ridiculous oh my God. This, I, was... I think this point is soup is incredibly important so i just want to kind of focus in on it because this reminds me of uh, a, a situation that's very close to my heart so i can't get too much into the details of it but the reality is in this organization when something bad happens or somebody's victimized um how how that person is judged depends 99% on whether or not they believe that the Jehovah's Witnesses are right or that they're going to continue going to meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if a person is hurt and and they just kind of disappear like you did a little bit, right? Like, you, you know, you yeah, go off yeah. on your own and you just need some space. You don't go to yeah. the meetings very much. Immediately the elders are looking at you like something's wrong. Um, they're spiritually mm -hmm. weak. Obviously Satan has got to them. Where on the other hand, the other person who abused somebody or committed something, you know, some kind of even a sin, according to Jehovah's witnesses, if mm -hmm. they are one of those people that goes right back to the hall and they're friendly with people yeah. and they cry <laughs> to the elders and they continue to talk about how this is the only way of life. And I love Jehovah and I've hurt Jehovah and I feel so terrible for how Jehovah feels. They know all the things to say. Those mm -hmm. people will always be supported by the congregation. Always. The elders will always be on their door. They will always speak highly of them. And if that person that was victimized never comes crawling back, begging for forgiveness for leaving for a bit, yeah. Um, they'll just, they will just continue to abuse them and they will kick them to the curb and they don't care what happens to them while these other people will, they'll be propped up, supported, loved. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, those people years down the road will pull the same shit again in another way, because obviously there was something wrong with them in most cases, this isn't hundred percent of the time, but I just, I know from experience in most cases, these people end up doing the same thing again and the same cycle happens again. And these are generally the people that'll, that'll, they'll screw up again and they'll just be like, I'm sorry. I love Jehovah. I want back. And they'll just keep coming back and back and the congregation will keep having them back. But the people that, that get so hurt that they leave, they don't care what happens to them. 
Yeah, it's you not know, the people, it's the organization. Yeah. That's what's most important. It's the organization. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it's a it's a skewed point too. Be, it, it, the point of like, is it a person or is it the organization, right? Uh, before I get down that path, Nash, I totally agree. And to your point, that was my last meeting um, with any elders. Like, they didn't follow up after that. These are people that I've been in the congregation for like twenty three some years. I yeah, think. they knew you your whole life. Yeah. I've, some of my life, yeah. Um, but they so I who I thought were friendly. We had like lots of awesome conversations and just like, you know, we hung out with them. They were our friends. So there was very odd, like disappearance, disappearing act of my, my friend base, um, my community. And so, but it all comes down to optics, you know, mm -hmm. what, what are they seeing? So those elders saw exactly what the rest of the congregation saw. And that's why they all pulled back. Well, she left her husband. So She's obviously in the wrong. They were all going after on the optics of it, not on the reality, not on, you know, actually talking to me as a real person. You know, they were only carrying and, and real love, life. real love for their. I mean, these are supposed to be shepherds of the congregation. They're supposed to care about the people. You know what I mean? Instead, oh, yeah. it's the optics. That's what's most important. It's optics. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. even um, at that meeting in the restaurant with these two elders and they both came, you know, they were totally dressed up, like going to a meeting. And uh, they they both had their Bibles in their hand, and I didn't. I came from work, so I'm like, you know, I'm dressed appropriately for work attire. But yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And so they're trying to open up the scriptures, and I said, I stopped them. I said, I don't want to hear any. Like I've I've heard it all. Like, do you really think yeah. that I don't know the scriptures? Yeah. My like, whole life, <laughs> I've heard this. Yeah, <laughs> it's so crazy that that's going to turn me back. Like I'm mad right now. So do you think the scripture is going to calm yeah. this one down? <laughs> yeah, I've heard that scripture oh thousands of times. Like that was more infuriating than anything. Like yeah. let's let's turn to First Corinthians. Da da da. I'm like. You know what? No, this is not how I can do this today. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. But, but yeah. So then huh. after that. Yeah, they so love to was... carry the Bible around. That's uh, it's funny because you notice that with uh, false religion. So pretty much every other Christian denomination, I've watched all these documentaries on them, and you see yeah. the preacher, even these 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 charismatic preachers, getting interviewed by the reporters. Um, and they'll have this great big Bible and they'll be like holding it up here by their heart or whatever. Oh, and you, and, objects, and, Je right? and Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. we always thought we were so different. They're the same. Oh, yeah. There's uh there's old, um, what's his face on the ARC given his, uh, Jeffrey Jackson and he's got his Bible out. Every time yeah. you see an elder in court, they got their Bible out. And it's like, yeah. you guys, what are you doing? Do you have your Harry Potter book in court? It's the same damn thing. <laughs> the court doesn't give two shits what your book says. So leave it at home. And yeah. they think I got God with me here, guys. You yeah. better look out. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is power. It. I mean, in the court, they've always used the Bible, like to swear on the Bible, right? Yeah. You tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's that's a thing, right? Yeah, and yeah. so there is a power there that uh I think most Christians, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, believe that when you when you hold the Bible, I mean, I felt power coming out of that book <laughs> at yeah, one that's point. The sword of the spirit. Yeah. Right, to totally. Judge Just people like crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But yeah, there's there's definitely a power behind that book. All scripture is inspired and beneficial. Yeah, all, of, all the words. especially that story about Lot and his daughters. It's inspired and it's beneficial for. Yeah. I don't. I don't fucking know what I have stories about guy getting your dad drunk and getting pregnant by him. I don't. Gross. How's that? How's that beneficial? It's just disgusting. No, Nash, don't come on. Don't disagree with us here. Don't 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 bring up logic, please. We don't we don't need. That. I, it is funny though to look back on uh, when people bring up three thousand years ago how King Solomon did this and that, and that's what we're supposed to go by. Like, what yeah. about all the millions of people that have contributed to society and? and the goodness of the world and what have you since then, like mm -hmm. why can't we look at them as an example? You know, that always bugged me. Yeah. Well, Not and you're, you're looking back to individuals that had an archaic view of the world too. They didn't oh. know about the unit. And, and, you know, just think of if you were to go back and talk to Solomon about his opinion of women, what do you think Solomon <laughs> would say? 
Do you think that, Solomon would be like, yeah, you know what? I think women and men are equal and in, in society. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, I think he'd be pretty shocked. He would think women are probably similar to cattle. And we're going to listen to this yeah. guy. I mean, he, he would ask me to be his concubine, probably. For <laughs> sure. Yeah. Definitely. There's thousands. Wasn't it thousands of? Oh, yeah. He's yeah. like, I, mean, I just might as well have another one. But, you know. <laughs> but Solomon, we got to live by Solomon's words because he, he was, was so wise. Guy. Yeah, no. I always said, you know, what if uh, if Moses came to visit me today, would he even know what what how to survive? <laughs> you know, yeah. calling up an Uber and uh, <laughs> like um, taking a taxi or like going to get groceries. Like, I'm sorry, they have. There's no way that they could um, uh, relate to our life as we know it now. So mm -hmm. how are we supposed to relate to their life as mm -hmm. we know it in the Bible? Like it's so archaic. That's a great yeah. point. So true. Yeah, we don't uh, we don't farm and herd cattle like them anymore either. <laughs> so why would we base every other part of our life like them? I don't. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know. Um, well, you know what? This is. The, I'm just having a great time with you, Tammy. I mean, we've got like a whole bunch of questions here, and we've we've only got like the first one. <laughs> <laughs> going to be that kind you know, of day um yeah. can we can we talk about uh you know uh we're having a lot of fun here but i'm going to be debbie downer a little bit and uh you know Gross. um you david have downer? what's that dave, david, david downer. downer dave downer yeah whatever sure <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah whatever floats your boat greg <laughs> whatever yeah. yeah i like debbie downer better you can call me debbie for the rest okay, of the debbie. show right. can Bring you change down. your name on there yeah <laughs> <laughs> bring us down or not it's debbie Okay, yeah. here we go. Um, getting serious. Death. Um, oh, we've, we've talked a little bit about um, funerals and JW funerals, um, you know, and how weird and and actually, um, you know, you know, a funeral is supposed to be about the memory of the death of, of, of the person that's died and how they just turned it into a, you know, a converting uh, seminar. Um, you have some experience with that. Um you know more maybe a little bit more than most or you know can you can you talk about that a little bit and your experiences there uh yes now we go into the dark side of tammy <laughs> yeah let's go um, to the dark side let's dim the lights channel's here. all about <laughs> lights and candles <laughs> yeah yeah get your ouija board out no, yeah okay. uh can i you? have never played one of those i just i don't know neither but, have i actually right. but Okay, before we digress to the Ouija's. Um, <laughs> okay, so my first memory in my life is actually the day my dad, my, my dad, the day my brother died. Okay. So, you know, death has been something that's very, this is kind of weird to even say near and dear to my heart. I don't know. It's kind of a strange. Um, well, me and like, Nash have the same feeling. Like, I don't know if you know my brother died. Like, I, do you know that Brian passed away? Um, I might be. No, I didn't. I yeah. No, like I, yeah, no, I didn't know that. Maybe I did know that. I sort of feel like there's something I might have seen online somewhere. Or yeah, yeah. I, so I, my I, younger I, brother Brian passed away, and Nash. We've dealt with Nash's brother's passing. Nash has two brothers that have passed away, actually. Ooh, uh, so yeah, this is a big deal for us, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so same here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I so I'll try not to be too happy about it. Um, yeah talking about it yeah it's we nervous. can laugh i, I okay. laugh when i'm nervous okay so yeah, yeah. Oh, i get it smiley um it's more that i'm just nervous even just sometimes talking about these things because they're so you know close to yeah yeah well the first day the first memory of my life is my the day my brother died in a uh, uh farming accident in alberta and um i'm not going to go too deep into it but that was my first memory. Then probably the next memory is his funeral. And it was at the Kingdom Hall, of course. Um, and uh, it was open casket, as a lot of things were done back then. Um, you don't really see open casket as much anymore. Mm. Um, but in Alberta, like, I don't know if um, Nash, yeah. you've when I was, yeah, I'm, I'm in yeah, Alberta, I'm from Alberta. Yeah, when it I'm, was pretty common when I was when I was like, young, when I was a kid, right? How old were yeah. you when that happened? I was um, four and a half. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. So anyways, but some of the things that stick out were just odd. Like, I don't remember the talk or anything like that. I remember looking at my shoes a lot because I knew I had to be sad, but I didn't understand it. 
Um, right. But I do remember the open casket. My brother's there. I don't remember seeing him, thank goodness, because that's probably crazy. Yeah. But, um, but I remember people going past it. And the casket was at the very front of the hall, like right in front of the stage. And it was open. And so then people would go by and, uh, you know, see him and like this whole procession of people. And I just remember my friend at the time, Paula, I'll say her name because no way, I don't even know who she is or where she is now. Okay. Um, but little Paula, she was my age and she was on the, on the uh, shoulders of her dad going through. And I just, it bugged me so much because it looked like it was like a circus. Like, I just remember thinking, this isn't a circus, like to go and see my brother. Like, so I was so, it bothered me then. But then throughout my life, like our family never dealt with it. Like I have two other sisters. So there was three of us at the time when my brother died, my mom was pregnant with my, my youngest sister. And uh, so, you know, the, the amount of like stress, <laughs> you know, through my parents is just unbelievable. I can only imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. And they have shared more of that um, more recently which is also just heartbreaking. And so I give them a lot of leeway when it comes to the um, Jehovah's Witness stuff because the stuff they've gone through is completely traumatic and tragic. So when, so through my life though, there is no really grief counseling. It's all about like praying about my brother coming back in the, in the paradise after Armageddon and the resurrection and all of this. So this was our hope. Every single prayer I can ever remember my dad giving was about seeing my brother in, in uh, after the resurrection. Right. And so that was, there's no grief counseling. So I, I was actually very kind of an angry person. I, I think like with my parents, I was just so upset with them. And I didn't know why. Yeah, and you I, didn't know where it came from. Yeah. No, no, yeah. forever. Like until I, like I think I was in my late twenties when I was talking to a friend of mine. I couldn't actually say my brother's name until I was like twenty five. Um, it just I just couldn't deal with it. I was so upset about it, um, and I would just cry. <laughs> like even just saying his name, I couldn't even do it up until I was twenty five and started talking about it, realizing okay, I have to process. This is a process. And that's what grief counseling is. They get you to talk about things that mm -hmm. you can move forward. I mean, that's counseling in <laughs> as general. One, one general, yeah. Um, where you, you talk about things, and that's why channels like these are important, where we tell our stories because we're processing out traumatic stuff that's happened in our life, and, and hopefully someone else can maybe find comfort in it, right? Yeah. That's kind of the general part of it. But uh, yeah, so that was my first funeral. I've always been interested in what happens like to the dead bodies. <laughs> so, and I'm, <laughs> I know this goes weird. This may be this weird. All right. We're You're weird and cool. Tabby. Taking a You're turn cool, weird. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, can you dim the lights more? Um, <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I could. I would. <laughs> I don't, I don't have the technology. Green screen. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, um, one of the jobs I worked is a chamber of commerce. And they would do these uh, um, business after hours type of things where you'd go to a business and they would tell you, you know, basically give you um, insight about what they do. And you kind of have it. It's a networking thing. Well, one of these businesses happened to be a funeral home. And I'm just like, I am so interested like in everything. And so he's taking us all into in this tour. And I'm like, can we go on a tour? And he's like, yeah. And so I'm the only one wanting a tour in this whole group of people. That's awesome. I'm excited. I can't, I'm like, can't imagine yeah. why. <laughs> so weird, right? That's so cool. So we go in the back room where nobody gets to go ever, really. And you're seeing all these like tables and all this, all these, all everything, you know, all, all the things <laughs> to yeah. like take the blood out of the person and, you know, and right into the inferno of like how to, you know, burn the bodies and all this kind of stuff. I was so curious about it all. And then I'm like, well, I'm asking every question and people are like kind of looking at me. Like, yeah. But I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm just curious because I've dealt, I've had so many people that have died in my life where I'm just like, well, that happens when they go into a casket, you know, yeah. what are they, what, what happens before then? And yeah. what if they are cremated? What, what happens to, how do you know that they're actually, those are their ashes? Hmm? Mm -hmm. And then, 
what happens if not everything's burned? Um, anyway, so I was asking all of these type of very touchy type of questions. Yeah, I didn't yeah. feel were touchy. I just felt they were just yeah. interesting, right? Just wanted mm -hmm. to know. Yeah. So anyways, so there's that little side of me, kind of that. And then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, also because like I had, um, um, so on my side of the family, um, my, my grandpa died. My mom's father died. He was never in the religion. Um, but he also had an open casket, but it wasn't for the funeral. It was, you could go and have a viewing as right. more, maybe more common. Yeah. But yeah, so I've, I've never been seen any uh, a, a, a person that's passed away like an open casket or viewing. I've never seen any of that before. Oh, yeah, they yeah. did a viewing for my brother, but I didn't really. Go. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. No, and I, I also we also did a uh, open casket. There we <clears> didn't <throat> do it. We went to one. Um, me and my ex husband for his um, uncle, and then also his grandma, who also were not in the religion, and that was going into a. Uh, um, Catholic, old Catholic Orthodox little church. And that was very weird experiences as, and I was a Jehovah's Witness then too. So it was kind of frowned on in, mm -hmm. in the first place, but that was also open casket. So yeah, I've seen a lot of that. And mm -hmm. also my great grandparents, hmm, there's a lot of open casket. So I guess yeah. that's why I probably have more of a, I don't know if it's a fascination. I wouldn't want to go that far, but with uh, interest. Yeah. 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 Well, can I go back? I, I kind of yeah. want to ask something here. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's so, so much to talk about here. There is. I want to yeah. go back because uh, there's something I, that I noticed. So you were, you know, four and a half or so when your when your brother had passed. Um, now, you do you have much for memories of your brother, like real memories or just kind of pictures and that sort of thing? Yeah, more yeah. pictures and then just yeah. feelings of like I'm I'm pretty sure I remember things, but it's more of just I think a feeling. Like he was my first playmate I ever had. Right. Like and I were so close. We were, we were um, 13 months apart. Um, so yeah. And then just um, like none of my family even talked to me about it until I brought it up when I was like in my 20s. Yeah, uh, so that's... Like, I don't think you would remember anything like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I wanted to kind of touch on is that yeah. is that I think sometimes, um, you know, when some when we lose someone as kids, I was quite a bit older, right? I was uh, eleven when my my oldest brother was killed, mm. and uh, and so I have some memories of him. But the reality yeah. is, I don't have that many because he was ten years older than me. Right. So we weren't yes. like close buddies or anything, right? He was moved out of the house at that point, and so oh, yeah. I don't, you know, I have some memories, but nothing really. Um, but you can't discount kids' grief, and I oh. think that the I think there's something to be said there uh, that's really important for, for kids that grow up in families that are grieving mm -hmm. because we may look at them like, well, they don't even remember. But that okay. kid was a part of a family that was grieving. Yeah. Um, you were a part of a family whose parents had just gone through the worst trauma of their life. I, I mm -hmm. think that losing a child is probably the worst trauma you can go through in your life. So. And, and I think we were all part of that um, as kids. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and growing up in this household that's grieving, but has no idea how to grieve and is, mm -hmm. has had their grief hijacked, uh, into prayer and waiting for, for paradise to have them back again. And, uh, and I think kids get overlooked, uh, a lot in that mm -hmm. sense, right. Where people just yeah. kind of write it off. Like they were just little, what's the big deal. And like you said, it took you into your adult life to start, uh, processing yeah. it. And dealing totally. with it. Yeah. And yeah. And they don't, the family doesn't, it's, it's like, I have a lot of experience in this too, which I haven't actually mentioned on this channel, but my father died when I was two mm -hmm. and uh, we, nobody talked about it. Like mm -hmm. I like literally didn't know his name till I was like in my teen years. Wow. You know? Oh yeah. And so, so yeah, it's like, it's like it witnesses, for whatever reason, they, they don't grieve properly. They just put everything on hold until they're going to see him or her again in the new system. Yeah. And so there's all these emotions that nobody deals with and it messes you up. Yeah, it does. It, yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, like they're <laughs> to be fair. Um, 
there was no taboo. Like it was taboo to actually have a counselor anyway, um, mm -hmm. back yeah. in, you know, the day when my brother died, but there was also a way I know that there was, well, I shouldn't say no. Cause I, I don't, I didn't even read really back then. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm sure there were um, ways to handle grief that would be better than just praying about someone. And that's the only way you talk about them. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't, we, we didn't talk about them at all, yeah. except prayer. And it was just too hard, I think. But the, also Nash, like to your point too, like for children, my sister, my older sister, she was, uh, th she's three years older than me. And uh, so she would have been like seven and a half or something like that, going on eight maybe. But anyways, she was there when it happened, when the actual accident happened. And um, so and she also, I mean, to this day, I think she's still very wound up about it. Yeah. And she won't talk about it. She doesn't talk about it. Um, yeah, my brothers were there with my brother. Uh, it was a motorcycle accident. And, uh, and same thing. It was like this weird, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's funny, be, not funny as a witness, you go to people's doors and you're like, we have the answer. Did you lose somebody in death? I've got this pamphlet here that will, it's going to make you so happy. And it's crazy mm -hmm. to think that you're telling people that when you've experienced it and you know, yeah. it doesn't make you happy. I've seen it in my own family. This does not, this is not the answer. You're telling people this is the answer yeah. and that you're going to be happy. I've seen my mom and dad. They're not happy. They're not Oh, they they too. haven't grieved properly and they're mm -hmm. broken people um to this day hanging mm -hmm. on to this hope because they think that'll fix it and yeah. it, it breaks it's my hard. heart to see to see that that waste of of life over something that could have been you know it's not like it, it gets like easier or better but there are healthy ways to deal with it where you can continue life and you Absolutely. can you can hold on to the things that you still have and appreciate them more um, uh -huh. than maybe you did before. And and witnesses get so caught hanging on to this this imaginary hope uh, that I, that's all they have left. I, I totally agree. And I, I see that with my parents, too. And I mean, that's even just recently, you know, I was invited from my mom to go to the memorial. And then also why it's so important for Jesus Ransom, because I'm, you know, all these things and then basically also in her same invite um uh talking about you know my brother and my grandpas and my grandmas all these people and other people who have died um right. how we're all going to welcome them back and we want you there as well so that you can help wel welcome them back too and this is a narrative that i've heard my entire life like we want to be there for when your brother wakes up otherwise he's going to be all alone like you don't want mm -hmm. him to be alone you know, like this whole thing, you know, Such that manipulation. Also, yeah. Huh, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you tell someone something enough like this, like Nash, when you're saying, here's a pamphlet on how to be happy or here's a pamphlet on how to deal with grief. And if you say that enough times, you begin to believe it. And that's the programming yeah. that is hap has happened from yeah. uh, from the Jehovah's Witness. Even and if I, you're experiencing the complete opposite, right? That's cognitive dissonance. Yeah. It's like, I'm convinced this is. This is yeah. the answer. Also, yeah. I'm experiencing that it's not the answer, but I've said it so many times, it doesn't matter. It is the answer. I'm doing something wrong if I'm not happy. It's This exactly. is on me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're doing something wrong. You need to pray better. You need to get to more meetings. <laughs> you need to be yeah. studying more. You know, and rely on Jehovah. Like, why are you so sad? You shouldn't be yeah. sad or depressed. That's, yeah. that's Satan's world. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's the sad part of it. <laughs> There's it no, no, no validation for how you feel. Right. 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 Yeah. I think uh, the training uh, for elders when they're helping grieving people is about 30 minutes. Oh, sorry. 30 seconds. They just they're just told just tell them to go to the meeting and pray and uh, read the Bible more. Here's, some, here's a that's list all of scriptures. Got. Read all these scriptures. Yeah. And then and that's it. And magic. Poof. Grief's gone. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all sad. better. I mean, it's sad because I, I feel sad for people like and my, like my parents, like your parents who have not dealt with grief. And mm -hmm. I mean, to my parents point, probably about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I want to say my dad actually wrote out this massive. Here was the day that your, my brother died and how he went through. It was basically a journal life of what happened that day. 
And it was so heartbreaking, but I, at wow. the same time, I'm like, I'm so proud of him for, yeah. you know, doing that because that in itself is starting to process it. Like he could That's actually healing. talk about it. Healing. Yeah. And my yeah. mom did the same thing. And I, you know, went through a whole other, like, you know, <laughs> cry fest, you know, seeing how my parents, cause they could not have that conversation in person ever. Um, yeah. but to actually write it out was very important, um, from a healing perspective, I think which yeah. I don't they're healed, <laughs> but yeah. no, but it, further along. Yeah. And it's a process, right? That's, that's the reality yeah. is it's a process and we don't, we don't treat other things in our life like that. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if I get shot with a cannon, I don't put a band aid on it and walk around like I'm good. Now my cannonball wound has a band aid on it, so I'm going to be <laughs> just fine. And yeah. so you can't do that with, uh, with addiction. You can't do it with, uh, with childhood trauma grief mm -hmm. all they do is take this bible band-aid they stick it on and they're like if this doesn't make it better it's your fault yes yes absolutely yeah yeah well you know what um let's let's leave that there that could be like five episodes um that, that we could talk <laughs> about that um and we've already like we've had like this is our seventh episode and it comes up every single time and i'm like trying to hold back because i have so many things to uh <laughs> that i could talk about in that topic but tammy um let's move on to your channel we are super interested in how and why and when you started your channel and how did that all come about and what was the reason for that all right well yeah i think um understanding a person's why uh, for themselves is really important in starting channels or starting anything you do really but in in respect to a youtube channel <laughs> that was not an easy one to start up quite frankly um so why? Uh, so I published my first video on YouTube in uh, December 2017. So leading up to that, so in May of that year, um, that was, uh, so my, my grandfather died in uh, two years before that, okay? So May 2015. So each year following, I was, my plan was to always send my grandmother um, big bouquet of flowers or something that her and I always shared. And then just as a, an, in memory of my grandpa, because mm -hmm. I knew she'd be thinking about that and hurting and just like, you know, they were very close, very loving, amazing people. So, and I was very close to them, <laughs> very close. Like I was closer to my grandma um, as a relationship than my mom. Like, you know, that relationship was just very tight and yeah. You know, so that even and we were in the same congregation um, for quite a few years as well. But even before then, like I was the one like I'd always sit on her lap, even as an adult. Um, we always kiss each other on the mouth. Like we just like she we had a different relationship than, you know, my, it's like me and Greg. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not into the kissing on the mouth, but Nation is. He loves that. Right. <laughs> Get you guys in the same room. You never know. <laughs> yeah. One thing leads to another. <laughs> Very yeah. friendly. Watch out. <laughs> That'll be another episode. I'm well, sure. look at him. Look how good looking that guy is up there. It's ridiculous. It's hard. He's hard to look at. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Hard to look at. Good to be open. Good to be open to yeah. exploring things. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyways, back to my grandma kissing. Yeah. Sorry, that was my fault. But, uh, but so yeah, so on in 2017. I had um, sent her flowers and uh, and it was always a surprise. It wasn't something she was expecting. So I sent her and uh, so she texted me or she phoned me. Anyways, I think she texted me and she's like, oh my God, I got the, oh, she phoned me. Got the flowers. They're so beautiful. And she's crying. My grandma cried a lot. And uh, so we all have like that <laughs> heritage of tears. Um, but uh, so she's like, they're just so beautiful and blah, blah, blah. I love you. And, you know, it was just our normal, how we are. I, of course, I was not in the religion. Like I'd already been out of the religion for, I don't know, at least seven, eight, nine, maybe nine years, eight years, something like that. And I just been busy in life, you know, busy just in life. And so I hadn't really explored too much of like the XJW community at all, zero, actually. Um, 
and that's important in a minute. But uh, so leading up to this, I sent her that. And then she texts me back. And uh, so we're going back and forth texting. My grandma's awesome texting. You could barely understand most of what she wrote. Really? Yeah. That's unusual. That's awesome. You no, know, I know. She was like, uh, I would have liked to have met her. Maybe I did. I, 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 I can't remember. I feel like you must have at I some point, be, yeah. maybe. But um, yeah. Yeah. If you said her, we won't say her name, but if you said her name, I'd probably be like, oh, oh, that was your grandma. Right, right, right. Yeah. I have a bad um, memory. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so then she's texting and um, and I said, well, I, I'm actually going to come and visit you in a couple of weeks. Um, hadn't been up there for a bit and I really wanted to see them or her. My grandpa's dead by this point. Um, and so everything's all happy, joy, you know, you know, all this. She up to this point, like I said, she had actually been OK with me um, not being a Jehovah's witness, you know, she, every time we talked, it was all about, um, you need to come back. We really, you know, Jehovah will let you come back, you know, like as the usual mm -hmm. preach fest, but, um, there is still love, right. There's still yeah. an acceptance of me. Um, and I, I could never have seen that changing until, <laughs> uh, I told her that I was coming to visit. And then she texted me and she said, um, I'm going to find, I wrote it down here somewhere. Where is she right? Cause I, I looked it up this morning. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And she goes, she goes, text me about it. Yeah. That she loved the flowers and thoughtfulness, but she cannot associate with me anymore. And even though it hurts her, um, it's the right thing to do. So bye now and hope to see you in the new world. Love grandma. So I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? i um, a terrible like, religion. Like, yeah, right. Like, I know this is not my grandma. And so yeah, I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? Like, and so I go, yeah. like, she can't break up with me over text. Like, this is my grandma. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, guys do that. And they're, they're dirt bags if they <laughs> break up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to let my grandma do that to me. So I phone her and I'm like, grandma, what, what are you meaning? Like, are you, why would you send that to me? That's so un, unloving. Like, that's so mean. And uh, she goes, she goes, no, well, you're not married because I was, you know, I'm living in sin at the time. And uh, she goes, well, you're not, you're not married. And so that's not acceptable. And I said, so what, if I get married, you're going to talk to me again? Like what's, what gives here? And she goes, well, no, you have to come back. And I said, are you kidding? I cannot ever come back. I, I don't believe it anymore. So you're saying me, you're telling me that I have to be a hypocrite to myself in order to have you love me or talk to me like this is not right. And so I'm we're having this conversation. I'm like, I, I'm dumbfounded. I'm like, how what how do you even reason with someone? I mean, you can't reason with unreasonable people in the first place, right? Or, or okay. with people that are involved in a cult. Unreasonable. So, yeah, you can't. They're unreasonable. Same, same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this is where we're at. I'm just like, grandma, you can't like this is so unloving. And anyway, so then um I go, so if I start coming back to meetings, you're going to talk to me? I go, do you realize how, like, you're sounding? Like, this is so culty. She goes, it's not a cult. And so we had a little quick snippet of a chat about that. And I said, well, what about my sisters, my cousins? They're baptized and they don't they don't believe anymore. So what, are you going to start shining them and start, you know? She goes, well, I, I haven't done that yet, but I, I'm going to talk to them. Thanks for the reminder. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta, she, I gotta get writing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she didn't actually do it. Um, and so do you I think that her, she just a what one? Do you think that she had heard like there was a recent part at a convention or a meeting or something 100%. that kind of got her thinking about that? Well, I think so. And I asked her that. Yeah. I said, "Was there a, t a special needs talk lately? Like to yeah. stop talking to unbelieving family members? Because um, that's pretty typical." And mm -hmm. uh, she goes, no, no, like really quickly, no. And yeah. I said, well, okay. you know, is there an article or something like that's come out in, um, you know, one of the magazines? She's like, nope, nope, this is my decision and da, da, da. And I said, I go, this is not you. This is not you. This is not how you, yeah. you treat your family. This is not right. Anyway, she goes, well, this is, this is right. Um, and it went on kind of a bit more and then she hung up on me. And so I was just like. I mean, I was so torn up about it. I was so heartbroken. So I sent her a text and I never quote scriptures anymore, but I did. And I'm like, you know, first Corinthians 16, 14, like um, do everything in love. Right. And uh, cause I'm like, this is not loving. And I to told her too, I said, um, if Jehovah is truly a loving God, he would not 
really allow this to happen. Like he wouldn't make you want to do this to me, right? This is not love. So anyways, from that point, so that year was like extremely hard. Um, it basically opened up this chasm of, uh, I guess, trauma um, that I hadn't really, you know, went, I hadn't really peeled away like the onion. Mm -hmm. it is. Um, I hadn't gone down that path of really, uh, you know, what happened around my divorce and what happened when I was first to scholarship when I was uh, 17, when I, when I got married, um, you know, that uh, my more recent shunning uh how about my parents shunning me on and off for many years um my brother dying like everything just kind of like like blew out mm -hmm. in my brain and <laughs> in my life and i i was just like so depressed um even even from the point of like you know well, why bother you know like getting to that point of like you know where you start thinking like that's the end oh like why why even keep going right right and so, yeah, I was like very, very in a very, very bad place that I haven't been in for a long time um, since then, thank goodness. But yeah, I hadn't really dealt with depression ever. And I think that's part of the problem at that time, because you kind of stuff things away um, yep. as these things happen to you, uh, especially maybe a, as a Jehovah's Witness. I, I think I've seen that a lot with people I've talked with where you kind of just cram it down, you know, if you think about that, you know what, Jehovah will answer that eventually, mm -hmm. just cram that away, you know, yeah. same way, if you're not feeling happy, put that away and say a prayer, um, you should read this Bible scripture, or this article or whatever, like, you just cram all these feelings that, you know, are absolutely something that you should deal with, you cram them away. And then when something actually triggers it to open up that um, vault, you know, yeah, it erupts. It erupts, and it was bad. Yeah. It was really bad. Um, anyway, so where we got to my channel is that I started. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry for the long. Um, no, hey, it's your it. show. It's your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but where where I was, I was like, okay, I'm gonna. I need to start writing, and I've always journaled, like, and that was one of my, you know, it's a therapy in itself, and I, I like journaling. I like writing. And so I'm like, I think I'm just going to start writing a book. And so I started writing chapters and all this kind of stuff. And then I was like, is this going to take forever? You know, <laughs> I really want to like talk it out. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. hard writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. the book's shelved at the moment because I was also thinking like, what am I going to put in it that I don't hurt other people? Yeah. I don't want to hurt my right. ex. That's probably you know? impossible. Right? Yeah. yeah you're going to hurt somebody. Yeah. And, yeah. You, you know, because names will come out or do you change yeah. all the names or do you change your own name or like, there's yeah. just so many things like, you know, that you, you sometimes feel like you can't be completely authentic or transparent because mm -hmm. there's there's some things you don't want to share with the world either. It's, and it's totally your choice. <clears throat> yeah. Like my trips to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Guys. We're going to finish yeah. with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Son <laughs> called for. <laughs> continue, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome we're not there yet but we will yeah. okay yeah um, okay. we're gonna finish yeah. with that <laughs> it, it's important to talk about that um yeah. but yeah so anyway so i was go gonna read it um <laughs> read a book i was gonna write a book and it started that whole process and my partner who i've now married um but my partner uh he was like he goes well have you ever thought about doing video like maybe doing youtube or something and and uh you know you're good on camera blah 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 and I was like, oh, what, really? And so then I started opening up YouTube. And then I'm like, holy cow, there's like a lot of XJW angry people, um, bitter and all these things. And so I was like, you know, you go down the rabbit hole of the XJW YouTube yep. community. So that was like 2017. It was a bit of an eye opener. And but anyways, so at the time, though, I was just like, okay, I really need to have a why. There needs to be a proper reason as to why I would go and, you know, spill my life basically on YouTube for the world. And what it came down to is that, you know what, if I can help one, just one person, if I, if one of my videos helps one person so that they feel less alone and that they know someone else is going through a similar life experience, then 
that's all I, that's all my why is about that one person. And so since then I've had many people that have reached out to me and they've said, I've helped them. And, you know, I've, I've even had conversations, video calls, phone calls from, you know, a lot of more women, <laughs> which is better <laughs> anyways. Cause well, it's good that. because that was a, that that's another aspect that you maybe, I don't know if you thought about that when you started your channel, but it was in 2017, it was probably like, there was like a handful of you, maybe less than that, you know? So it definitely probably was a need on YouTube for that. Well, I saw it as a need for like, I was like, gosh, that would have been nice if I had had anyone yeah. I could even see that was going through this kind of stuff that I have, you know, been going through mm -hmm. as a, you know, floundering XJW. Um, and so the quote that I'm going to share, though, that, it, that just really kind of put my resolve together as to my why, why was I going to do this, uh, is helping one person might not change the world but it could change the world for that one person. Hmm. And so that's, that's where I started. And so when I started my video, I mean, I think my first video I did for my channel was like, um, I think I did it about 17 times. <laughs> Cause that's it was really. just like, Oh, the lighting's really terrible. And, yeah. uh, or, or you just sound like a crazy person or you're talking too fast or, you know, all the things that go into making a video, they're not as easy as it, it might seem for someone yeah. to look at it, and especially <laughs> when you're publishing your own oh. and your own stories. It's, uh, I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. And then right after I did it, um, you know, I probably, I don't know, published a handful and, uh, and then I didn't realize that you could put really good filters on uh, YouTube. Um, so, cause I had all these people, like some people would be calling me every name you could possibly think of. Um, you know, from horror to, well, I'm not going to go through them all. <laughs> yeah, we can Let's list them off. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> <One to two. laughs> yeah. I know. No, let's not. Um, but you can imagine, you can fill in the blanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I was like really discouraged. I'm like, really, is this all that this community is about? You know, if we want to call it a community, but it is a community because there's yes, it is. people that gather, you know, and they're all from the same, for this, a similar meaning being XJW, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and not that we're all friends because that was another thing I, you know, I had a stalker at one point and I'm like, Oh, this is not, wow. cool. um, I had, I've had marriage proposals, even though I don't think they're totally serious. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> they probably were, but, <laughs> that's even weirder. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. There's been some weird, there's been a lot of weird things, yeah. but I always thought, well, if, uh, if that's only like a one or 2%, I can deal with that. Like, you know, the haters, um, or the, the, the lovers, um, <laughs> the haters more so yeah. <laughs> because you get way, you get a lot of angry people. And so then yeah. I just put filters on everything because it was just like, otherwise I was going to quit because I'm yeah. like, it's, it is hard. Um, the amount of, if someone is so angry at and taking it out on you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, but that's anyways, that's, that's how it all began. And that's where, well, yeah. I'd like to say something about your channel um, you know, there is a it definitely there's people out there that um, maybe I don't know, you know, individuals would have to answer this themselves, but they may have the wrong motivation, you know, which would be like to make money or to be famous. And you right. can really tell with your channel that it's totally authentic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Professional. It, well, no, actually, it is quite professional. I, I think That's no, not what he's saying you're yeah. way more professional than us. Oh yeah, like we don't do multiple we just, takes. We just do, do this one Lego. Take. We do this Lego block thing, and then we just put it up. And we're like, "There you go, boom." Yeah, I think that's yeah. what I like. Probably. Yeah, but no, it's authentic. It's genuine. It's like you can tell your motivation is really to help people, and you know, and that's why I think you've had well, one of the reasons why you've had such a incredible reception on YouTube. And, um, it's also, you know, like you don't make a lot of videos. You're not like thinking, Oh, I need to make content. I need to, you know what I mean? Okay. You, you know, like it's, it's really genuine and awesome. And for those listening XJWs or JWs, you need to check out living truth. It's a great channel. You'll love it. You won't regret mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, um, I do have, what, what's the future plans for the channel? Like, do you got um, any ideas? Yeah. Like I was, 
I mean, I always think about the content. So when you're saying like, you know, putting out content, uh, that is something that's when you're on YouTube, that is something that is coming to mind. Like, you know, yeah. am I just going to let it die? And, you know, or because there are people that reach out to me and they're like, Hey, we haven't seen you. Are you okay? You know, people <laughs> that genuinely care for me. And I'm like, that's really kind. Or, mm -hmm. You know, people that have been on my channel, which I haven't done a lot of because there's a lot of interview type of um, styles out there. But my my message, I think, is different in like, how can we move forward instead of stay stuck in the past? And uh, more of like, um, because there it's possible, <laughs> you know, yeah. because a lot of people who have moved forward without, you know, being angry and bitter. And, you know, I think there's a cycle of that, you know, yeah. I have. And I have definitely been there where I'm just like anger. <laughs> I'm so mm -hmm. angry. Yep. Or it's or, all you think about. You can't even sleep yeah. at night because you're so like your mind is racing about all these things. And there's yeah. a process you got to th go through to get to move yeah. past that. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, I, I want to reach out uh, or, or do more more videos. And uh, but it's I'm very thoughtful, I guess, mindful and thoughtful about what kind of stuff. Um yeah. And because I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not one to go over doctrine over and mm -hmm. over. Like I, I just, whatever you believe in, that's fine. Um, just as long as you're not hurting other people and mm -hmm. uh, trying to force it down someone else's throat, you know, like I used to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all did that. <laughs> <laughs> the Trinity yeah. is a lie. Yeah. I, I know it doesn't matter and it has no effect on anybody's life, but I'm here to tell you you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You're totally wrong. Uh, I mean, if you don't believe what I believe in, you're all, you're wrong. Yeah. And you're going to die. That whole mindset. Oh, gonna kill you. You're going to die. That's not a big deal. <laughs> don't yeah, want to be a mass genocide. Are nice. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I forgot where we're going. <laughs> the future of your channel. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I have thought of other things like uh, just other things to as tools. So I look at um, because having a healthy mind isn't, does it, doesn't just happen just because we start talking about our past um, traumas or whatever. Like it's an ongoing thing, like, because these things don't go away. And so I have spent a lot of time um, on myself, like, and trying to work through like uh, understanding depression and, and how to master your mindset and uh, a lot of work around that. Um, and those are the type of things I would like to share also to other people, because I think it could be helpful um, also meditation, I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, meditate I meditate every single day and it, I should I, meditate every day. Is that I've when you read like, a lot of, is that when you like read a scripture and then you sit in silence <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thinking about it? Is that... I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted you to do that. Um, the Watchtower has the wrong <laughs> definition of meditation. Their, their yeah. definition of meditation is to think a lot about something. <laughs> it's kind of the complete opposite. It's the opposite of what the real definition is. Because <laughs> they like, you just like fill your mind with crazy things. Yeah. I mean, real meditation, you can calm your yeah. calm yourself. Well, and feel, feel, fuel your mind, fill them with uh, scripture and thoughts that you aren't doing enough. Um, mm -hmm. That's never helpful. And that's yeah. pretty much how, so I didn't really understand meditation at all, other than it was bad because once you open and empty your mind, which is how the society or organization teaches that yeah. when you open your mind, you're leaving it open to Satan. Yeah, and so when Satan comes in, yeah, that's what he wants. He wants an open, yeah. a brainless mind because that yeah. they really, they really um, put a lot of emphasis on how bad meditation is yeah. like worldly meditation. Um, not meditate on the scriptures, but yeah, I've, I've understood things much differently now. Um, and I also it's do such yoga. a healthy practice. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's healthy. It is, yeah. I mean, that's why I can still smile and I, I don't drink bottles of wine all day long. Um, <laughs> just all night long. <laughs> <laughs> just, once in a while, just on Jesus Christ's death. Yeah. yeah. That's the only time <laughs> day be. drinking is okay. Yeah. Just hey, would you, memorial. would you ever do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Would you ever do a guided meditation? Would you ever do that? You think? Is yeah. It, yeah. And that's kind of what I'm thinking. Of you should that. do it. I, but I would totally watch that. I would, I would follow you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm kind of looking at something like that. And then um, just like not showing people how to do yoga, but more of just other practices that you can um, uh, bring into your life that can bring you more space. Cause uh, 
you know, our lives have become more complicated when it comes to how online we are, you know, our social media brings down yeah. a, a massive amount of um, issues when it comes to um, um, mental health. Right. Yeah. And well, so cause we can't disconnect that. right anymore. We can't disconnect it's from our job. Not, we can't disconnect from arguments yeah. over politics or whatever else, right? We take yeah, it home. Right. It's here. It's yeah. uh, we go home and everything's still there. Yeah. So that, mm -hmm. that's getting uh, notified of it. <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. that's, I think that's super, that's pretty important. What you're saying is that. Uh, yeah. And so like, I really think, you know, us as XJWs, us as a whole group, um, I think that people can thrive more than just uh, try to survive and, you know, go through the motions of watching every XJW anger video out there um, mm. because that, it's not going to help. Uh, you know, it helps for a minute to say, oh, somebody else understands what I'm going through or have gone through. Yes. But now what you're going to do? What are you going to do? Are you yeah. just going to sit there and watch more and more? Because that's toxic. It gets toxic. Like, very. Yeah. Especially like, oh, like when I first started uh, looking at videos online, like you, um, XJW videos. And there was all like these cart crashers and uh, people that were like going into the kingdom halls and like um, doing these. Yeah. Flicks. Like it was scary. Yeah. Like, that was making me nervous. Just like that. Just um, watching them. <laughs> yeah. And so some people wanted me to join um, some of the activities around. Uh, really? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I just, it doesn't resonate with who I am as a person. Yeah. You know, I really believe yeah. that people should believe what they want um, and we can, do things more peacefully um yeah. But yeah teach their own but that kind of stuff is it, it it uh gets people really riled up and really on that bitter train and that's not where i go yeah well and it's so great that you're saying that because you know that just flies in the face of every jw when they think of <laughs> somebody that leaves the organization right yeah. you're like bitter and unhappy and you know you got you're all these like i'm not upset at any one particular elder i can't think of one elder that i'm mad at I, in fact i i think of them as friends that i've lost it's the organization yeah, that yeah. that bothers me. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. it's not okay. bitterness. So it's so refreshing to hear what you're saying. And um, you are definitely on the bright side of XJW, you know, uh, in that world, you know, and I don't know. I'm super excited to see what you do in the future. And and uh, I'll be looking forward to it. I'll be watching. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Same with you guys. Um, so were you still talking about going to Thailand? Oh, yeah. Well, hey, let's move on to I, I think this will be our final topic. But you know what? It, this is the elephant in the room. This elephant in the room. Um, there's there's elephants in couple. Thailand, but yeah, apparently they're mistreated. So I won't visit them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, yes. hey, Tammy, like we don't see you a lot on Twitter and, you know, but you're you're kind of a famous XJW, but we don't see you around. What do you what do you think I about think so. you are a, li a little bit? OK, Um what do you think about what's what's been going on with Lloyd and all of this mess? Yeah, well, um, yeah, I've been pretty quiet about it. Um, you know, watching from afar, you know, through my yeah. screens. But they, when it, when his first, uh, well, I watched his live. Um, yeah, meltdown, like we all did. Yeah, <laughs> meltdown in January, yeah. and I was like, I mean, I, I, I felt for him then because i'm just like oh my gosh like he was going through like a mental apart. and he's going through depression and da 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 like i wasn't thinking i didn't know about you know him using prostitutes at that time or anything like that mm -hmm. i can't remember if he actually said anyways i think he did say that oh yeah he did because it was oh, just no, like, he admitted to it yeah. <laughs> it yeah. we'll, whole, we'll get yeah. sent a letter don't worry from his lawyers careful but litigation it, yeah. time it's coming <laughs> Yeah, yeah well, litigation this, but he admitted so to it unquestionably he did, he did i'm trying to remember back then but yeah so a few months ago now so when he when that was all unraveling i, I was just like oh my god first i was feeling sad for him because i'm like that that's really awful that his friend kim uh went and threw all this stuff out in public that he was you know in confidence telling her, her stuff mm -hmm. right but then when now she's sharing stuff and then it all kind of unraveled and I've read so many things and I've looked at everything. Well, probably not everything, but, you know, really looking at all because I'm like, if I'm going to talk about this on my channel, um, I really want to have like a, a proper view of it all. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I watched, honest, yeah. yeah. 
because I watched a lot of his videos and I like all did. Yeah, I, I thought he was funny. I thought he was, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I didn't watch a lot. Like I wasn't watching every video because quite frankly, I don't have enough time in my life for <laughs> that much. But um, I have like certain ones that would come up. I'm like, oh, my gosh, so what's new? What's going on? You know, new light you know, the new light of the organization that is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. never is new light. I was like, I heard that back in 1980. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Recycled light. Re regurgitated light. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so I was, I was seriously thinking of doing a video and I started like writing notes down about it. And then I talked to um, a friend of mine. Um, I had her on my channel, uh, Brenda, you guys may might have seen her or not, but yeah, anyways, I yeah. And she, she hadn't heard a thing about it. And she also followed him too. And, and um, she's like, Oh my gosh. And so I was like feeling like, okay. Um, so anyways, after her and I had the conversation and then I was like, well, I'm just going to sit on it. Cause I don't like doing anything too hasty. And, uh, and then I sat on it some more. And more. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, you know what? I don't know this person. I don't know either of them. Yeah. I don't know them. So who yeah. am I to start talking about them. Um, yeah. So let's stick to what we know and uh, and who we know, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. But for me to, to go on it about whether he's a good or bad person, I can have my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he cheated on his wife with prostitutes. That's all gross and bad. Going to Thailand is a whole other thing because there's a whole sex trade that happens there. So him mm -hmm. admitting he uses prostitutes in the first place and then saying he's going to Thailand for a break, um, and then asking his wife for an open marriage. There's yeah. too many things that are just kind of uh, cringy. Uh, yep. That for me, I'm like, you know, I, I'm not into following someone like that. And, you know, who he is. Well, even for me, and for me and Nation, and we could talk about this endlessly, but it's also his reaction after. You know what I mean? For me, it's yeah. like the the me narcissistic too. way you respond to everybody. Totally. You shut everybody down. And he totally. even talks so negatively about the community. Like yeah. they're all broken and messed up. And if yeah. anybody disagrees with him, you're yeah. just, you know, you're, you're, you're a victim and you're, and you, you need to work on yourself, you know? And totally. it's it, the reaction to me was just as bad, if not worse as as the whole what took place before that what he actually did you know it shows the true colors the of the person to be honest yeah you know yeah that's that's where i came out on this whole thing because people get caught up in in what he did um what he didn't do what he's accused of yeah. doing uh i don't care like the reality is in reality, like we go, he goes on about this is my private life, my private life, but you're throwing it out. You know, I've got things in my private life uh, too, but um, they're not those things. And, and I'm not going on the internet talking about them. Yeah. Yeah. Really? You know, and, and so he's gone up and he's talked all about it all. And then, and then cries, it's my private life. Mm -hmm. Here's the reality. You fucked up. Mm -hmm. You did. We've all, totally. we've all done it in some one way or another. What you don't do is you don't get drunk, go on a live stream, collect a bunch of money while you piss and moan about your friend that told on you, yeah. and and then and then try and garner support to go after anybody who speaks against you. It's insane to me. It's an embarrassment yeah. to the community. It's an embarrassment to me as an yeah. XJW, and I have nothing to do with the guy. But the reality is I don't want to be associated with anyone that behaves that way. Me nothing too. to do with the prostitutes or anything else. Own your actions. Mm -hmm. fucking apologize and, and it's not like i need an apology it just shows what yeah. kind of person you are like it, it it means nothing to me like i don't he doesn't need to apologize to me i don't deserve yeah. an apology but yeah. you should yeah. apologize just because you have a huge following and support and and a decent yeah. person would be like you know what i fucked up i'm really sorry i need to deal with this yeah. and i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna go try and deal with it and get my life in order and then i'll probably come back to talking about XJW stuff. And you know what? I would have been, I would have probably oh, stayed yeah. subscribed. Totally accepted that. I would have been yeah. on his Twitter. I would have been like, whatever. You know what? Deal with your personal right. problems. Nobody, everybody makes mistakes. Carry on. But this, this nonsense, it was just like, I can't support that oh. kind of behavior. I can't be okay with that. It's not okay. But, you know, if he's, because he said multiple times, I, I'm taking a break. And so I'd see it on Twitter. I'm not active on Twitter too much. But I, I have a Twitter channel or whatever, but 
Um, but I'm like, if you're going to take a break, take a break, stop. Yeah. Like, yeah. and he's saying, I gotta take a break. And then he's back on again. And then he's, I'm taking another break. <laughs> I'm like, but you know, I'm like, do you understand what a break is? <laughs> um, break is but the other thing, like in his meltdown, live meltdown in January, um, one thing that really like kind of hurt, like not hurt, but it was just like s- struck out uh, the viewer was, um, oh, you know, he's doing the video and he's like, oh, look, at there's like a thousand people on right now. And he goes, yeah. all you You're guys all are sick. sick. You're sick. Yep. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, you're calling me sick. You're calling all your viewers sick who yeah. actually were caring about you? Like, yeah, that he doesn't really- think much of his followers. I hadn't even, I didn't even know what it was about. I hadn't seen the Reddit uh, post. No, I, I just popped on because I, I, I. Not- I had notifications for his channel because I used to watch most of his stuff. So I yep. pop onto this live stream and I'm like, what in the actual fuck is happening here? I had no yeah, idea. What is he talking about? And yeah. here, this is a crazy yeah. thing. And he's and he's talking down to the whole community, and yeah. he's, and he's trashing somebody, and I'm and he's admitting stuff. And I'm just like, what? What is happening? Why is it? Why funny, is it happening? And, and um, Kim said something the other day. I found interesting. She said that that he was talking to the community like they already knew he had was sleeping with hookers, yeah. and it didn't come out till like near the end of the video. Where I actually put it together. Oh, oh, he is admitting to sleeping with hookers, but he's acting like everybody knew. I didn't know. I had no idea. No, I don't think anyone really knew except for his few people in the group. So he should have kept that close. And even in the live, do you remember like in the, as you're watching it, the live feed and people are, some people actually gave him money during the live feed. Yes, a lot of people told him to fly to come, come come visit me in the States. We'll pay for a plane ticket for you. Yes. I'm well, like, Sean, Sean really? gave him money and then because he didn't even know what the live stream is about. Capitan, oh. he, he went on there, gave money and then had to go back to work. And then he watched it later. and He was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I didn't mean to give him money. Oh, my <laughs> That's God. Hilarious. Pretty sure that was Capitan. Pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> Another awesome channel you guys should check out. Yeah. Capitan. Oh, what is that one? I don't know that one. He's a podcast. Okay. Capitan, yeah, Sean. He's telling his story right now. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. (laughs) Well, um, Tammy, uh, like we are at uh, you know an hour and forty minutes here. Or um, do you? uh, I think that we'll kind of leave it to you to give us the last word. Is there anything you want to say before we kind of shut down the episode? I think we're done talking about Lloyd. We could talk about that for multiple episodes (laughs) too. But you know any. Yeah, I don't he, want Lloyd to burn, just for the record. I know he says that they all think this. We oh, don't yeah. want the guy to burn. Get your life yeah. in order. Yeah. yeah. Look after yourself and your family and, and just cut it out. We're not shunning him. We didn't disfellowship yeah. Lloyd. No. Yeah. No. But anyway, Tammy, yeah, yeah you got some. Yeah. Uh, la- oh, sorry. You want to say something more? To Nash or me? <laughs> oh, no. About Lloyd. No, I thought you were going to say something more about Lloyd. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> to you, Tammy. I guess. um that would be my last word actually is uh uh, showing up if you're going to do a video i think we could have more people doing videos but be authentic you know be authentic and genuine don't like call people down you know they might be hurting on you like you know like we were talking about the haters that come out in in the droves Mm -hmm. sometimes um but just stay stay real to you like this whole um narcissistic attitude of like what we've seen recently. Um, yeah. If we can stay more away from that, because that just gives more fodder to uh, the JW uh, mm-hmm. dot org people who, yeah. you know, the apostates are bitter. You know, that's what we've always been told. So can we not change that? And that's what, yeah. that's really what I, I think uh, my last message would be like, I think there's a better way to um, be an apostate or be an XJW without carrying a load of bitterness and passing yeah, that yeah. on through all our channels. Awesome. There's well, um, <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of negativity sure. in the world. We don't need to yeah. add to it. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, having you on here today was just a blast of positivity. You know, oh. I'm like, yeah. 
Yeah, like look at you over there. You you look happy, and you you also live in a beautiful part of the world, and you know you just look like uh, you know like something that we can all like a little bit of an example for us. So you know, um, thank you for coming to see us today. It was a uh, it was a, a massive privilege for us to have you here, and wow. uh, I'm just yeah, I'm just so excited, and and I had a lot of fun today. I hope you did too. I do too. It is my pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll do it again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Tammy. Well, Thanks, Tammy. Uh, this, yeah, this won't be the last time. We'll see you again. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, thanks. Bye. See ya.